uh, some background about Ingenuity for anybody that's not familiar or maybe is not up to speed about the history um, and, and what Ingenuity offers. We were founded in 1994 to focus on the development and design of LawnWorks interface cards, I.O. devices, and drivers. And then in the late 90s and early 2000s, we were the leading uh, LawnWorks experts globally. Our founder was the uh, president and chairman for LawnWorks International. But we began noticing a shift in, in that uh, market to include more open systems protocols and a drastic increase in the number of industries that were applying uh, that, that type of controls technology. Since then, Ingenuity has added Modbus, BACnet, InOcean, HD PLC, and then, of course, Master Niagara AX and N4 certified engineers, uh, technicians well versed in IoT, Open, I, uh, open API cloud solutions, system design, and pre-programming services. And then we have one of the fastest uh, growing UL panel, panel shops in the country. Uh, we provide a wide range of manufacturers representing all of the major protocols. Uh, we have more than 60,000 off-the-shelf products to meet your solution needs. Um, we've supplied, supplied products to over 80 countries, global, uh, global com companies, um, of all sizes, from the one-man shop to Fortune 100 companies, we have the resources to help every type of company uh, reach their goals. If you have any questions during this presentation, you can write them down and ask uh, at the end. I know Andres is going to uh, give us 15 or 20 minutes at the end to, to uh, ask questions. But if it's urgent, there's a raise your hand button um, that you on the on the go to meeting that you can raise your hand I'll unmute you you can ask or you can just type it to me in the chat and I'll gladly interrupt and uh, make sure that you get your questions answered with that I'm going to turn it back over to uh, uh, Andres from the Phoenix contact team and then he'll get started with this uh, presentation about the Tritium Niagara PLC product series. Very cool. Thank you very much for the introduction, Mike. It's very much appreciated. I, uh, as well as you, am very uh, excited to be here to to present this this technology and this product line uh, to your guests. So I very much am very appreciative for your efforts on putting this together, as well as for the attendees for taking a little bit of time out of your busy days to come in and see this presentation. So thank you very much. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about uh, Phoenix Contact and some of the uh, building automation uh, product lines that we have available and how some of these way uh, interface with some very common and very strong uh, building software uh, called Niagara out there. And I'll get into a couple different topics on, 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 on a lot of these different things. Uh, so the first thing, uh, that's me. I am the guy with the beard on the left and the blue shirt. And uh, my name's Andre Suaza Wills. I've been working with Phoenix Contact for about, I want to say, six years ago. So I, uh, I'm a graduate from uh, Purdue University and Butler University. If we have any uh, people here from Indiana, they, uh, they may know some of those colleges. Um, I graduated with electrical engineering and computer science. And I came to work for Phoenix uh, uh, out of college for for an opportunity to work in, an, in, a, in a truly industrial automation type country, uh, company. And automation has always been a very interesting topic. So I, uh, I was uh, very quickly attracted to the opportunity to be here with this company. So uh, there's my contact information. I am particularly specialized in our uh, uh, building automation platforms and our, and our strategy to, to, to really go after that type of market. Uh, but my background's also been a, a little bit varied. I've done a lot with uh, serial protocol converters. I've done a lot with uh, networking equipment uh, from switches to routers to remote connectivity solutions. But I decided to migrate over to uh, a more centralized position that focused more on control for uh, for certain types of applications. Uh, always uh, industrial by nature, but focused a little more towards the, the building automation market. And I'll get into what that means throughout my presentation. Uh, so I want to go ahead and, and talk about uh, a product line that is extremely important for us at Phoenix Contact and a product line that we're 
we're very excited to be uh, going out there and promoting to the market, particularly because we're working with a, a couple phenomenal companies like Tritium, we're working with companies like Ingenuity uh, to bring this technology to, to the U.S. market. So I, I imagine that most of you are, are familiar with uh, some form of building automation that happens in either buildings that you integrate yourself or you may be an owner of a building or or you may have some piece of a building that you're putting together that will eventually be integrated into to one of these applications. But if you think of a traditional uh, building, a lot of times you'll have uh, a variety of different systems and you'll have a lot of end users that want to have some form of automation in, in, in their building. You know, you, you're coming into your office, you don't necessarily uh, want to have a particular person checking every time if the person that's coming in is authorized. Maybe you would want some badge access readers. Maybe you would want some uh, lights to shut off when you leave your office. You would like some uh, uh, some information for fire and security so that you make sure that that your employees are safe. All these things happen by by doing automation practices uh, within your building and not necessarily by having a, a man behind a curtain actually doing all the work. If you know what I mean. When you have a lot of these automation systems being put together, what, you, what ends up happening is you go ahead and you uh, contract somebody like, let's say, Johnson Controls to come in and they'll do your, uh, your, your HVAC in your, in your building. And you'll contact uh, Siemens to do your fire and security or you contact uh, a variety of different companies that maybe specialize in these particular areas to do those uh, portions of the building automation system and what ends up happening is you end up having a variety of different systems that that have uh, their own protocols that they use to interact with upper layer systems or uh, their own languages that they speak their own hierarchies and that can get complicated particularly when you want to one integrate and have for example the HVAC talk to the room automation or in situations where, for example, you may just not want to have five separate systems that you go in to have to talk to each individual piece of this, of this puzzle. So in comes a software that is called Niagara. And Niagara is an, an open framework that allows you to bring all of these pieces together and bring them under one single umbrella. The beauty of Niagara is that it's an open framework. And what that means is that when you are uh, that there are there's a very large community of people that uh, use Niagara and because of the open framework these users can can go in there and develop drivers to speak to all of these different uh, systems that are out there so Niagara is truly a gateway to be able to communicate and to centralize your your automation control or your particularly in, in majority of cases your building um, and so that you have them all under the same umbrella and you can have uh, one central location to feed information to either a, uh, a cloud storage system or talk between your HVAC and your room automation and, or, your, or your other pieces within that puzzle. That's really what the beauty of what Niagara brings into, the, uh, uh, into this automation world. From a system architecture standpoint, you would have a variety of different systems. And if you think about it, when, you, uh, when you're doing automation in, in any sort of automation system, whether it be you know, in, in a water wastewater treatment plant, whether it be energy management, whether it be uh, uh, building automation, you will have these sort of uh, silos where you're doing localized control. And you do localized control because you know, if you um, if you want to turn on a pump when a certain temperature gets at a certain level or you want the, the, the heaters to turn on when the temperature is too low, you know, you have kind of a localized control and you might have a variety of these systems put together in, in different locations. And at the end of the day, these all come back and come into this system that called the Niagara supervisor. And the supervisor is a, just a data aggregation or data concentrator. Um, it's a, typically a server or a PC that has a lot more horsepower to hold in the information from hundreds to thousands, tens of thousands of I.O. points, whereas at your individual systems, you may just have um, a couple thousand uh, or hundreds or thousands of I.O. points, it's a significantly smaller scale than that system that is uh, monitoring 
the information on, let's say, as an example, uh, 30, 30 well sites or 30 buildings or, or whatever your system specifically may be. But at the end of the day, the most powerful thing about Niagara is the adoption piece. So there are up to date uh, or are 25,000 certified Niagara professionals and this community continues to grow more and more. Um, there is 6,000 system integrators in a variety of different countries and there is a lot of uh, adoption of this technology uh, in the industry, particularly in the building automation industry, uh, to do automation. And that is, is an extremely important piece because it means that that being able to find people that are knowledgeable on this technology is not a hard, not as hard of a challenge as if this were the introduction of a brand new system into the market. So with that, I'm going to jump a little bit more into uh, our company. What does Phoenix Contact do? Because Niagara is not a software that is owned by Phoenix Contact. We we partner with Tritium to bring in our own uh, value add to what they do as a software. Uh, piece. So we bring our own value proposition. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But Phoenix Contact is also, I mean, we're a standalone company and we're actually a pretty, pretty strong company. We've been around for almost 100 years. Uh, we started in uh, 1923. We were uh, built in, uh, in, in Germany. So we're a German based company. And uh, you know what they say about uh, German automation. It's uh, something about very high quality. So we were, we're a German-based company and, and we have subsidiaries all around uh, the world. And we, uh, we've expanded a lot, everything from, uh, actually we were the first company to build a terminal block. And a terminal block is literally just a piece of metal with, uh, with uh, plastic around it, but it's a very powerful tool for connecting outside sensors back into a, a control cabinet, which is really where we shine. If you think of, a, of an automation application, that's really the types of products that, that we create here at Phoenix Contact. So Phoenix Contact also plays in a variety of industries. And one thing that I want you to notice is that the majority of industries that you see Phoenix Contact really participating in are going to be uh, industrial by nature. So we've been making products particularly for automotive industry, for oil and gas, transportation, uh, water, wastewater, a lot of machine building. And we've recently also uh, began producing products that, albeit our, our bread and butter products fit well into the building automation market, having a, a piece with Niagara gives us a better uh, footing into, into this world of, of building automation. But Phoenix Contact has truly been an industrial uh, manufacturer of components, components for the automation of these systems. So if you think of a, uh, of a, um, of a wastewater treatment plant. You know, uh, uh, solids come in and they must go to a clarifier. A clarifier has a, 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 a an arm that moves around and is controlled by an automation cabinet uh, that opens pumps, closes pumps based on the information that is coming into this cabinet. We are a component manufacturer for cabinets that are used to automate a lot of the systems for these industrial applications. And we do a really wide range of products that that we try to promote uh, a, a sort of cabinet confidence for our customers as to what they can do when they're integrating um, automation control systems. We do a variety of things. We do control. It's one of the, the main topics of what I'm going to be talking about today, but we also do power reliability. You know, uh, we do power supplies, power monitoring, surge protection. We do connectivity. So if you want to bring all your sensors in, whether that be relays, it be uh, uh, terminal blocks, it be cabling solutions, we do uh, shop floor productivity. So if you're, uh, if you're a panel builder, we have a lot of tools and marking, t marking installation uh, equipment that makes it easier for you to build um, better cabinets that, that look better and are more ergonomically created based on some of the tools that we have. We do a lot of networking and remote connectivity. Uh, so if you need to get access to information that's in a remote location, you need switches, you need uh, uh, routers we, and uh, wireless products, we build a lot of... Uh, with a lot of strong competence on that. We also have a competence on a lot of industrial protocols, so Ethernet IP, Profinet, and then finally safety. Not a maybe not necessarily a topic that you may think about very very often in this industry, but safety is huge in areas like oil and gas, uh, where if something goes wrong, a relay really needs to shut off or stay in a specific position when it's 
when it uh, closes or opens. It's, these are some of the considerations and these are some of the things that <laughs> are important to consider <clears throat> when having a uh, cabinet built for a lot of these industrial-based applications. But when you think of an industrial application, for us, one of the best examples of this is going to be this idea of factory automation. And if you think of factory automation, there's a lot of moving parts going on. I mean, you have uh, conveyor systems, you have uh, uh, a lot of wireless networks for a lot of the different piece, moving pieces to be able to communicate to each other. You have rooms that are controlled, that are temperature controlled or that are pressure controlled in order to produce and, and manufacture components at a, at, a, at a high quality of, uh, of standards. But there's also a lot going on. This isn't an environment that is uh, air conditioned. It's not an environment that is in a, in a location that is very clean, for example. This is a, a factory floor. And in a factory floor, you're going to have a lot of motors that are creating a lot of EMI, a lot of noise. You're going to have a lot of, uh, of um, you know, different uh, temperatures in different locations. You're going to have a lot more of a of a, of a dirty environment that requires really industrial-based products. And this is really uh, where Phoenix Contact lives and where we, we build products for these types of industries, and this is what we focus on. But what does industrial mean? So at the end of the day, I, I presented this at a, at a show a few, uh, a few months back, and, and it was a show to introduce why uh, Phoenix Contact had a value proposition to bring into this conversation of, uh, of industrial applications with Niagara. So if you think of industrial, uh, the most expensive real estate in the world is actually the real estate uh, within a control cabinet. Because if you think of a, a control cabinet, it is a, a very small space that you have to put a cabinet. And in this cabinet, you have to put the information for hundreds, if not thousands of I.O. signals that come in are connected, are protected, are powered. And because of that, if you are not conscious about the size of the products that you're putting out there, that can create a little bit of a problem with the space needed in order to control your retiring equipment. You may not even have that space available, period, and that creates a big problem for you. Um, and the other considerations of what industrial is, is a lot of it is, uh, is due to environment. So UL testing, for example. So we test our products to what's called UL 508, and it is a, a standard that is specific for um, industrial applications. If you are a panel builder and you are building panels for the uh, um, for industrial applications in water and, and oil and gas and power generation, those panels are required to have um, this UL 508 certification in order to get a stamp saying yes, this panel is appropriate. Uh, for usage in this type of application. Um, industrial environments, there's a lot of concern for signal integrity. So isolation between the different signals coming in, you know, if you're sending signals out to a, uh, um, to a temperature sensor, for example, and there is a motor that's in the middle, that motor is going to create an EMI that might damage your signal so that you're not actually reading an accurate measurement of that signal. Even worse, if that noise really couples into your line that's coming into your controller, it can cause damage to your controller as well as cause um, other of your signals to have issues with the quality of what you're reading. So having that isolation is, is going to be key as well. And then shielding. So when that noise comes into the controller, how do you actually dump that noise uh, into ground so as to avoid contamination of your other signals? The other big things to consider is uh, shock and vibration. So you saw in that factory out of factory floor application, there's a lot of moving parts. There is uh, um, uh, equipment for moving boxes that's uh, running around all over the place. You may have this product in a, in a situation where there will be some vibration. And when that system vibrates, you have to have some consideration for what that's going to do to the internal components of that that uh, controller or that or the other uh, pieces that are used within that cabinet, uh, those are going to be some of the important considerations when you're thinking about what an industrial application is. At the end of the day, an industrial application is anything that requires your products to be hardened and requires your products to be robust and, and ready to 
be in environments that may not necessarily be constant at all times, but you may have changes on them. And these controllers need to be able to, to withstand um, those types of environments. So critical applications are going to be very important to have uh, these types of considerations. So this is what a, uh, a traditional industrial control cabinet looks like. And you'll know, notice there's a lot of industrial product here. Um, there's a lot of different controllers that are being used, a lot of different switches, but all of these products are, are industrial by nature. And, and a lot of times the controllers that you're going to see in these applications are going to be uh, these types of controllers, you know. So if, if you've had some experience in the, uh, in the industrial space, you'll see that uh, these are some controllers that you might have some familiarity with. Uh, Rockwell Automation and Alan Bradley build a, uh, their controller. Um, so the, the, the Seaman Schneider uh, Phoenix Contact also has their own line of PLCs. And these are PLCs that are being used in order to do um, a lot of the automation in the factory floor. But one thing that's important, and it, and it, it kind of brings me back into this topic of why, why is this important to the conversation, is there are so many applications out there where these are the controllers that are being used for both uh, building automation applications, particularly in areas like a factory floor, or simply to control uh, certain things that could be done um, with a, a building automation system that you might be more familiar with, but, but they don't have the industrial grade nature and therefore are not used in those types of applications. Um, and a lot of these systems have their own proprietary networks in order to communicate with each other. So this creates challenges for some of the users out there, particularly as things like IoT start to, to, to really um, take more effect. So what does Phoenix Contact do to address this? So we saw a need. We saw that there was a lot of applications, building type applications or, or, or automation type applications that could be satisfied in, the, in these industrial grade applications. But we saw that there was a, a lack of ability to do this with a, pro, with a system like Niagara because um, they really needed an industrial grade version of the hardware to do that. What we did is we grabbed this amazing building automation software, and we took everything that we'd learned and we'd known from the uh, from the building from the industrial world and all the considerations that are needed to make products that are more hardened and and prepared for these for these areas. And we created a marriage between them. And we we grabbed this Niagara software and we embedded it into one of our industrial controllers to have the ability to use the software in more industrial grade applications. So what does the hardware really look like? Well, this is a little bit of a, of a shot of what that hardware is. So you have um, a DIN rail that has a connection to shielding. So uh, DIN rail mounted products are really all that we do. And this product has a, 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 uh, a shield that connects to the DIN rail so that when you attach your DIN rail to ground, that's how you get a little more isolation from <clears throat> a lot of your I/O signals. Uh, you get a uh, you get the ability to do strain relief, a lot better I/O management. You use spring cage in order to be able to uh, do more easy termination. You have isolation on every single I/O slice, and these are all different slices. I'll show you a little bit more about it as we move forward. Um, and then you do a protection between your 24 volts and your 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 AC and your DC circuits as well. And, and those are some of the considerations to be had for industrial grade hardware. And these, uh, this hardware really lends itself well to some applications that are really a little more into the light industrial world, applications like data centers, chillers and boilers, even sawmills, applications where <clears throat> you may not need a, uh, a, uh, a fully quick deterministic system, but you do need, and, and a building automation software does work well for them, but you do need a little bit more of an industrial grade platform and you need, you, there is some form of a criticality that is needed in order for these systems to work appropriately. And it also lends itself for he some heavy commercial applications. Think of airports, think of healthcare, think of a, of a situation where you have in a hospital a, uh, uh, an operation room. An operation room needs to be kept at a certain pressure, at a certain temperature. Uh, those are some of the uh, 
applications that this controller fits really well because this, the Niagara software lends itself well based on the openness as well as the, the uh, capacity of that software um, to be used with these types of applications. But at the same time, you need an industrial or hardened perspective because you cannot have that piece of hardware be a failure point uh, for your system. <clears throat> so in comes the ILC 2050BI. And this is really a product that we're talking about for this presentation. This is a Phoenix Contact controller um, that has Niagara uh, embedded into it in order to be able to be used in these types of applications that we've been talking about. So in terms of the specs, it's uh, got a Cortex-A8, it's got a one gigabit RAM memory and a four gigabit uh, flash memory that can be expanded on a, with, a, uh, with an SD card. You'll notice it's got a, a wide temperature usage and uh, more importantly, it's got a lot of uh, testing that's been done on it for more industrial applications like UL-508 or like uh, electromagnetic interference. So those are some of the, the considerations of this controller uh, that are made for these types of different applications. Um, a couple little features and benefits about it too. It's got a four port switch on the front of it. This this allows you to do uh, two separate NIC cards. So if you wanna have, for example, a little bit of separation between your your uh, plant network or your and you wanna have uh, some separation between that and the actual, excuse me, actual ancillary devices that you're connecting to like uh, uh, DDC controllers or uh, your VAD boxes then you can have a little bit of isolation between those devices and the upper system and kind of use the controller as a gateway. It also has two RS-45 ports, and this is uh, particularly um, uh, important because it allows you to use RS-45 for your backnet con uh, conversations with a lot of your ancillary products. And then it has the ability to add up to 63 I.O. modules on the controller itself. What that means is if you have a variety of different signals, whether they be analogs, digitals, um, or a variety of different types, you're able to add up to 63 of these types of I.O. modules next to the controller, which allows you to really minimize that space that, that is needed. So what we did as a company is we grabbed this uh, ILC 2050BI controller. And we it, it was a platform that we are very familiar with. We we actually use a very similar platform for our uh, our actual PLCs that do a lot of the deterministic control and that are used in a lot of these actual process control applications or or factory control factory floor control applications. Uh, it's a hardware piece that we've had familiar to us for a long time that has its own um, interface to communicate with the I/O uh, that is available on board. So what we did is we brought these different I.O. pieces and we created drivers that interface with Niagara and then we brought them into the Niagara framework. So if you have had experience in, in working with Niagara in the past, um, then you'll know that within Niagara, there's a variety of different drivers that can be driven, uh, written to speak with a lot of different control systems or different ancillary uh, sensors. Um, and our I.O. functions in a similar way where there's drivers that you use to bring those and discover those I.O. points within the Niagara software. So then you're more easily or able to grab those I.O. signals and, and attach them to your program. Once the I.O. is within this Niagara software, uh, you have all the, the capabilities that you are given within Niagara. And, and again, the strength of Niagara is really its drivers. You have FastNet, you have Modbus, you have LawnWorks, you have a variety of different protocols that are now available within your, your uh, Niagara framework that you can use to communicate with a variety of different systems. And then again, this is our, our I.O. concept. And again, the idea being that you use the amount of I.O. that you think you're going to need for your application. So as opposed to buying uh, bulk pieces of I.O. where you buy 32 channels for, for your I.O., you may be able to buy, uh, you know, if you need only four digital signals, you can use, you can buy a card for only four digital signals. If you want um, eight analog inputs or four analog inputs, you buy the I.O. as you need it, um, and then you, you connect it to the base station as, as a slice. 
each slice has a has uh, has a variety of different I/O pieces points on it, a digital or analog, whatever it may be, and you're able to have up to 63 of these slices uh, connected to a single controller. And just to give you a point of reference, that would be about uh, a thousand digital signals if you were using our our highest digital I/O module, and it would be about 500. Uh, analog signals, just to give you a little bit of a frame of reference of how how large of a system you can really put together um, if you wanted to uh, for this for your, your localized application of a certain system. But at the end of the day, the key features and and the key reasons why this controller is important and is really something that is is worth considering is modularity. So again, we talked about the high quantity of I/O. Uh, that you can have um, connected to it. And actually, it's uh, not 1,000, but 2,000 signals if you were to use our highest uh, digital I.O. module, for example. And you can buy only the I.O. you need as opposed to be buying it in bulk pieces. You can buy a little bit more of a of, a, of smaller systems uh, depending on what, what, uh, what I.O. you need. Uh, but it's not only that. It's also the fact that the um, I.O. itself is of a very small footprint. So if you want to use, uh, have a very high count of I.O., it won't necessarily take that much space within your control cabinet. Again, going back to that point of how, uh, how expensive the real estate within a control cabinet can be. It's a unique controller. It's really the only controller out there that has this modular perspective and that it has uh, as high of an industrial grade um, of a controller and that has the ability to run Niagara, which again is a is a very popular uh, software platform that is traditionally used in building uh, systems, but can be now adapted to be used uh, a little more in light industrial or heavy commercial applications that were traditionally uh, owned by exclusively PLC type manufacturers. And then it's the high quality. So if you do have critical applications, we're having a high, a very high resolution of the I/O because that's another uh, that's another key thing when you're talking about industrial applications is the resolution of your I/O, and you need more robust than an industrial design on your product. And this is a, a controller that can kind of marry those two worlds together to give you a solution for those for those types of applications. Uh, when it comes to the licensing model, there's there's really two pieces to the licensing of this controller. So. Um, you can buy a controller. The controller comes with a host ID, and that host ID is then attached to a, a, a license package. For those of you that have been familiar with Niagara, it's, it's very similar to other Niagara-based controllers. But the idea behind it is you buy you buy it per point. So, for example, if you were to buy um, an ILC 2050BI and you wanted to get um, let's say 40 analog signals, 40 analog inputs, 40 analog outputs, 40 RTDs, um, 40 digital ins and 40 digital outs. That's about, I think, 200 points of I.O. You would buy a 250-point license um, in order to bring that I.O. in. Now, every piece of I.O. that you create within your program uh, becomes uh, an I.O. point that goes against that license. Now, there's also a, uh, a device count. So, for example, if you have a controller that's going to be connected to, to five different devices, then a device is really defined by a, 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 a piece of equipment that has maybe an IP address or a, a, uh, an, an ID of, of the device if you're using something like Modbus. Then you also have to take that into consideration. But the point count is going to be the, uh, uh, the big factor to consider when when um, when thinking about how how you're going to do the licensing package for this, and there's also the supervisor piece, and the supervisor piece is the piece that is used in order to um, to bring in that all, that information all together um, into one central station. So again, you have your your supervisor license that you can use to, uh, and and you buy again a, a supervisor that'll connect to a certain amount hey, of uh, controllers. Uh, hey, uh, Andres, uh, Xavier. Yeah. Um, has a has a question that he wants to ask here real quick. Uh, Xavier, I'm going to unmute you here in about five, four, three, two, one. Go for it. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yep, okay. we can hear yeah. you. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering if this is this only for 
the can do AX with this, or is only for the four, the newer four? Uh, this controller uh, can do AX on it as well. So you don't need a separate controller to do it to run AX on it. Uh, you do need the AX license to run AX on it, but it uh, but you don't need to buy a separate piece of hardware for it. So it can run AX. It can be set up for that. Yes. Okay. Okay, and then all all the control is done through the workbench, right? And you're just running it through that. That's what I'm thinking. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, if you so already have the workbench software, you can uh, uh, open up a platform and, and and download stations into our controller. Okay, gotcha. That's all I need. No, thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, as a uh, as Vader was asking, so uh, there are some a variety of versions of the Niagara uh, software. The Niagara AX being a, a previous, uh, very popular version, and the Niagara Four being the newer version of the uh, Niagara software. And our controller is able to run uh, run both platforms in in one piece of hardware. And it, it is dependent on the license. There is a license that must be used <clears throat> in order to gain access to the AX uh, feature of this controller, but you don't need a separate piece of hardware for it. But the licenses work uh, similar for the supervisor as they do for the controller, where you you grab a controller and you define how many points of I.O. you're gonna be connecting to and how many devices, and then you buy a license for those devices, and then you buy a maintenance package for those devices. Now, one of the things that, that freaked me out when I first heard about maintenance packages, like what, so if I don't, uh, if I don't uh, update my maintenance package, my controller stops working. That's not the case. It just means that if, they, if uh, Tritium decides to do some uh, updates to the Niagara software or they're going to the next revision of Niagara, in order for you to get those, those updates, then it will, uh, will require you to have an up-to-date maintenance package on, on your controller as well as on your supervisor. But then once you move away from the super, from the controller, you get into the supervisor level. And the supervisor is really, again, your server station that collects the data from all of your controllers and brings them back to a, a central host station where there you can do a variety of different uh, things with it. You can send it to a visualization package. You can uh, uh, do more powerful analytics with it with some of the tools that Tritium has for uh, data analytics as well to do... Uh, uh, better energy maintenance or very, very better energy savings applications and, and variety of different formulas for that. Um, but then you have to buy as well a supervisor for the amount of controllers you're going to you're going to connect to the license, maybe the the drivers that you're going to need to communicate to other systems, um, as well as a maintenance package that goes along well with that. So let's bring it all back together into the point of having this conversation and why we started with factory floor automation. So Phoenix Contact, again, is a company that does, um, that's been involved in the industrial space for almost 100 years. And we really saw a market need to bring um, an application or a, or a product that was uh, that was available in the in the in the commercial world for building automation that had a lot of strong potential to it, but that had a lot of problems integrating into these types of applications due to the nature of the controllers that were being used, like a commercial, uh, more commercial grade controllers. Why is this so important? Why why not just keep the worlds separate? If you think about it as this idea of IIoT and, and the industrial or the, the Internet of Things, or what you might in our space we call it the industrial Internet of Things, as this idea starts to kind of propagate, you begin to have issues when you're using control platforms um, that all have their own proprietary protocol uh, used for them. So if you think, for example, um, uh, think of, a, of, of one of your own buildings where where you are responsible for taking care of the automation for the lights, the HVAC systems, the, the fire and security systems, but you also have an area that has a plant floor application on it. You are not 
necessarily going to be able to use the same control platforms that you're familiar with for building automation and, and use them in this factory floor, particularly because of the, the lack of industrial grade and, and robustness of the controllers that you're placing in these types of environments. <clears throat> the beauty of Niagara is, again, that it's a gateway. Today, what people do is they will have a variety of different control platforms that will have Rockwell with Ethernet IP, they'll have Siemens with Profinet, and then they'll have some form of a gateway, a converter, a, a PC that has some form of a, of a translator between this, uh, this industrial, uh, uh, industrial protocol and is able to then translate it into something that you can then use to bring back into a central station where you can run more analytics on your building or run more analytics on the the, the information that's happening down at the factory automation floor or, or in these uh, light industrial applications or, or heavy commercial applications. Niagara is a gateway. Niagara has now, they are working on drivers for Ethernet IP. They're working on drivers for Profinet. Uh, they have drivers for all these different types of systems that might be more in a factory, uh, in a factory automation floor and now give you the ability to bring them up to uh, your centralized system that you use to run all of your buildings. So what Phoenix Contact is trying to offer is we're trying to offer a way to bring uh, Niagara uh, down to, to, to the edge, the, the, the edge that is the, the industrial space and that is this uh, um, industrial processes and being able to gather more information from them. Maybe not necessarily control it and become the main controller that that runs your assembly line, for example, Niagara isn't really built for that, but it is built to be able to have a lot more control of the building functions within the factory floor or gather more analytics on some of the processes that are running on a day-to-day on a -day basis in these applications. <clears throat> so with that, I also wanted to add, we really do believe in the value of our product. I mean, we create a very high quality product tested to the highest standards. We don't cut corners and we make hardware that is robust and that we really feel like is, is something that if you put in, a, in, in your system to run or to, to control or to monitor your applications, you won't have to worry about these controllers failing. We believe in it so much that we've extended a limited lifetime warranty to a variety of our products, including this Niagara controller. So what you need to do if you want to obtain a, a, a lifetime warranty on this product is you will need a Phoenix Contact power supply as well as Phoenix Contact surge protection for that power supply. And you also need to protect some of the signals that are leaving a building, particularly because those are the most... Uh, High, high chances of having a very large surge come back into your control cabinet that could uh, severely damage your controller. But if you do these things, we will extend you a lifetime warranty on our controller. Again, we are not really concerned on, on this type of, of, a, of a warranty for us because we really do believe in the quality of our products. So we feel that if you are going to install this product in your applications, and it will be something worth your time because you will reduce the amount of downtime that you have on your system. And for us, it's something that makes a lot of sense to offer because it's, it's, we have products that are, that are worth this type of warranty behind. <clears throat> but again, bringing it back to who Phoenix Contact is, we, we don't just do uh, control systems. We have a very wide range of ancillary products that go within a a control cabinet that really do give you a more robust and industrial grade quality hardware. We're actually the leading manufacturer for power supplies and terminal blocks for industrial applications. Our quality in those products is very well known in the market and most people know us in, our comp in, in, in the industry for those products because of the high quality of them. Um, but we don't do just that. We have a lot of products for network and remote connectivity, for surge protection, for uh, we do our own line of industrial PCs, as well as a, a lot of gateways that we do for more industrial-based protocols, um, similar to some of the ones that Niagara does, but more for building protocols, for, for the building automation model. So as a conclusion, again, Niagara 
<clears throat> is a very popular software that is traditionally used today for building automation applications. If you are in the building automation world, Niagara is probably a topic that you are familiar with and, and that you know and have probably integrated to um, a lot of your or some of your, your building needs. But what Phoenix Contact is trying to do is we're trying to bring um, Niagara down into the factory floor, down into these uh, light industrial applications or heavy commercial applications like data centers, like sawmills, like um, healthcare facilities, where the, the control needs for those applications have a certain level of criticality where you would want to use the best possible hardware you can think of because you cannot afford that system to go down. If you have a building that you're integrating that has that controls the lights of a specific floor, and for some reason those lights don't go on on a Monday morning, okay, your employees might be a little bit upset about it, but it's not the end of the world. If you're in a data center and your temperature control system goes down and that data center increases temperature by one degree, <clears throat> you are losing a lot of money. So you would want to use a control platform that is extremely reliable and tested for, 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 for the, its robustness and, and its quality of, uh, of, of hardware equipment. So what we're trying to bring is we're trying to bring this industrially graded uh, product into applications that you can use so that you can also run Niagara in those systems. And the last thing is uh, we have a limited lifetime warranty on our product. We really do believe that our products are very high quality and we make a variety of products that can be used in a in a lot of uh that can be used to satisfy a lot of the needs of your control cabinets uh, for your variety of applications. So with that, I am going to thank everybody for your time. I really again appreciate everybody uh, taking a little bit of time to be here and, and listen to this presentation. I'm going to look to see if I can find any questions. Oh, let me see. Having a hard time looking at these, but so and it's pretty hard to look at them. Um, I'm going to throw up a contact page. So if it looks like it goes blank for a second, nobody freak out. I'm going to try and share my screen so you guys can see uh, how to get a hold of us here at Ingenuity and uh, get get your hands on this product. We do offer um, evaluation. Uh, units if anybody needs or, or has a need for that um, just so that everybody is is aware um, you should be able to see my screen here just a little bit of contact information for you uh, in case you need to get a hold of them I did uh, see um, that Darren had a few different questions here. Um, first is, is the, is the license? Uh, I, actually, Mike, I, I was able to expand the view so I can see the questions now. Um, okay. okay. So uh, the first question, yes, from Darren is, uh, is there any RS-45 expansion cards available if you need more than two buses? And the answer is yes. So we, we have a variety of I.O. cards that go along with this controller. Uh, those I.O. cards are analog inputs, outputs, RTDs, thermal couples, thermistors, uh, digital inputs, digital outputs, and then we also have our communication cards. So whether it be an RS-232, RS-45, or other expansion cards of that nature, um, then those are available as well. Uh, assuming there's a specific jar for this product in Workbench, or is it detected as our IO bus? So we have our own set of drivers that are used to bring in the IO that's connected to this controller. Uh, but the controller itself appears as any other controller would in Niagara Workbench. So you address it via an IP address. You open up a platform to that controller, and then you can download a station to that controller. Um, now, you're, if you have an existing station that is with the uh, with the RIO, then you are uh, then the IO mapping itself will have to be redone as you need to uh, then import the driver. Uh, which, by the way, you, our drivers are free. They're available on our website. You have to add them to your workbench. But once it's on your workbench, you can <clears throat> use that driver to bring in 
um, RIO. RIO then becomes discoverable with a with a, within the software, and then you can bring those IO points into your program and, and link them to your different uh, uh, wire sheet programs. Uh, can the modules be remote via uh, bus to the controller, or must they plug in each other, into each other? So at this time, we don't have IO that is remote in the same way that the IO is on the controller, but we do have an IO platform that is Modbus based. Very similar to the platform you just saw where you have that sliced IO, uh, but instead of using uh, the discoverable protocol, you, you could use Modbus in order to bring that remote IO back into the system. So can this product talk Profibus, Ethernet IP, and other protocols? So this product is a hardware piece that has full Niagara installed on it. What that means is that any driver that is available in Niagara is available to us. Uh, but uh, we do have other controllers that are specific Profibus controllers, Modbus controllers, and other industrial-based protocols. But I will add that Tritium is in the process of releasing Ethernet IP and Modbus TCP as, as protocols that will be available uh, for, um, for within Niagara. And we're actually in the, in the process of, uh, of testing that. Um, is any of the I.O. intrinsically isolated? I don't believe that we have any intrinsically isolated I.O. that works with this controller. We do have other I.O. platforms, remote I.O. platforms particularly, that, that could work through our Modbus uh, network, for example, that are intrinsically safe I.O. And we have a very wide range of, of relays and isolators that can be used where you may have a non-intrinsically safe I.O. coming in on one side, but have an intrinsically safe I.O. on the other side. Um, and then I have, uh, is your license open to any uh, brand of supervisor workbench, or is it locked to Phoenix only? Uh, no, our, uh, uh, if you already have workbench installed from uh, another uh, Niagara uh, application that you've worked with, it should work with the same workbench in order to program our controller. Um, and then, uh, so I think that's that's the uh, the main topics of the uh, the main questions that have been asked at this point. Um, I think Greg might have some more to add uh, to the conversation, uh, so I'll let him jump in and and and, and have those discussions. Hey. Guys, Greg, I want you to remember yet. that this is. Am I unmuted yet? Am yeah, I you're unmuted. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I want you all to remember that this is a full blown case. So it can be licensed out to 10,000 points, 200 controllers that you can hang off of your RS 485s or uh, BACnet or LAN IP into the controller. So that's one of the things I wanted you to remember. Uh, as Andre uh, mentioned earlier, you can downgrade to AX, uh, but this thing here has also got one more little thing in it that wasn't really brought up uh, and probably should be thought about. Uh, you've got a choice when you when, when you pull this thing out of the box. You can choose N4, you can choose AX, you can also choose Sedona. Uh, if you've got a, uh, an application where you put this in a central plant and you want to bring uh, your 10,000 points from your field devices into this thing, uh, that's perfectly acceptable, will work just fine. It could be, uh, whether it be uh, uh, M4, AX, or Sedona, that all will work. Uh, don't think I'd wanna do it with Sedona, but the fact is, is it will work. Uh, I have got one on my desk here with 11 or 12 cards hanging on. I'm here to tell you it's the cat's meow. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for the additional commentary, Greg. Um, and yeah, I, I also want to thank everybody for 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 attending the presentation. I want to especially thank Mike for for setting this up. This was a I really do appreciate the opportunity to be here and uh, present to you these solutions that we have to to work in from Niagara based applications, uh, a little more focused on the industrial the industrial space. But thank you very much for your time, guys. Really appreciate it. Fantastic. And I'll just add that we will be. 
embedding this webinar into our website, so you'll be able to access it at any point in time. Um, and I will send out a link to that for everybody who uh, registered or attended. Uh, and I think that'll conclude the webinar. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to give us a call, shoot us an email. We'll do anything that we can. Uh, have a great day.